Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily video update for October 15th, 2024. One week from today, a very important summit will be convening in the city of Kazan in Russia. This will be the annual BRICS summit. And BRICS, of course, stands for Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. This is the uh, most important of the various international institutions that are involved in a break from the existing dollar system. Not a full break, but uh, moving away from that. Uh, they'll be joined by their new members, Ethiopia, Egypt, uh, United Arab Emirates, and possibly Saudi Arabia. The Saudis have not made a final decision yet, but there are going to be another 30 countries there. Uh, many of which have applied for membership, including Turkey, Indonesia, Malaysia, Vietnam, Algeria, Nigeria, Mali. Uh, many of these are nations from the global south, and they are expressing their interest in a potential to have a credit system and a trade system not controlled by global financial institutions. They're essentially demanding their sovereign rights that include fair trade, uh, freedom from IMF financial blackmail, self-determination. And this has been denied to them by a financial system that was set up at the end of World War II and that was initially intended to be by Franklin Roosevelt a system that would provide the credit and the trade capabilities to break from the old colonial system. But unfortunately, it's remained under the control of those financial institutions, the same financial institutions that are destroying the Western economy. And they're doing it under the guise of a unipolar order or a so-called rules-based order. Now, some are calling the emergence of the BRICS the step toward a multipolar order. But perhaps better would be the idea of a multinodal order. That is, many nodes, many countries in bilateral and multilateral agreements with trade between them, corridors of development, cultural exchange, and so on. And importantly, this new system that's being proposed uh, is all-inclusive. They're not ruling out anyone from joining, even the United States. Putin has said if the United States wished to, or the European nations, they could join or apply for the BRICS if they could qualify for membership. Now, what about Germany and France? Well, both countries are suffering from very poor economies. They, the, Macron even requested observer status, although I think that was turned down. The problem with Europe is the self-suicide of the green policy, the sanctions policy, the tariff policy against China, that in a sense, the European Union is completely dominated by the Anglo-Americans and committed to their war against the nations moving toward the BRICS. Now, there are scare stories in, in the US press and the British press saying that this is an anti-American move, it's unfair competition, it's out to sink the dollar, it's a plot against the dollar, and so on. Well, it's a plot against the military-industrial financial complex, which has weaponized the dollar to sustain the looting policy that's needed for the banks of the Western system to stay afloat. Now, it, it's really quite rich for them to accuse the Russians, the Chinese, and others of harming the dollar, when the dollar is a self-inflicted wound. The policies of the West, as I mentioned, the green policy, the anti-technology policy, uh, the bailout policy, the unwillingness to invest in the future, but looking for ways of, in financialization, making money from trading. What has been done in the West has been a Ponzi scheme, and it uses the South to provide cheap raw materials, cheap labor. Uh, in a sense, it's robbing Peter to pay Paul. But there's not enough loot from the South, especially as Southern nations are saying, we're not going to play this game anymore. 
So where are they going to turn? They're going to turn on us in the West. They're going to turn on the citizens of the United States and Europe. They already have. And what are the taxes going toward? Bailouts of the financial uh, bankruptcy, bailouts of the, the so-called too-big-to-fail banks, and going into military spending. And why military spending? To stop the move away from the unipolar order. So we see the, this in terms of the Ukraine war, where the explicit statement from Lloyd Austin and others is we're out to weaken Russia. We see it in terms of the, the China situation, the tariffs against China, the, the attempt to keep electric vehicles from China out of Europe when the Europeans can't produce electric ve vehicles cheaply enough, nor do we even have the electrical capability in Europe anymore because of the destruction of the energy policy. Instead, what we have in, in the West are wars to maintain colonial control. And that's what the Ukraine war is, that's what the maneuvers against China represent. And now we're seeing the, and these are basically defense of the collapsing empire. But we're seeing the beginning of a shift. It's a belated recognition, number one, that Ukraine can't win. Now, they're still pushing for this. Biden's going to Europe. Uh, he's going to participate in discussions. Are they going to continue to pour weapons in, uh, give uh, a go-ahead to Zelensky to use long-range missiles? Well, the U.S. military doesn't want to do that. So we'll see. There's a fight going on inside the U.S. Maybe it's time to go for a negotiated settlement. Then when you look at Southwest Asia, and what you see is openly... Uh, Israel committing crimes against humanity. Again, another attack on a hospital, on a tent city, uh, assassinations. Uh, th this is not good for Israel, and it's certainly not good for the United States or Europe. And now that with the attack on the UN peacekeeping forces, the UNIFIL, uh, Netanyahu accused Hezbollah of using the United Nations for human shields. And he called the UNIFIL workers who came under fire from the IDF forces, he called them hostages for Hezbollah. Well, this is not going too well in Europe. There were calls yesterday from uh, France, Germany, Italy, and the United Kingdom for Israel to stop the attack on the UNIFIL, the UN forces, saying it's a violation of international law. Of course it is shooting UN forces, but it's also a violation of international law to forcibly remove Palestinians from Gaza. And yet that's what Israel continues to do, now attacking northern Gaza again. Where are people supposed to go? Where are there places for them to shelter, to get food and work? This is the policy that is being investigated by the International Court of Justice as a genocidal policy. So in, in this, and, and also I should note that four Israeli non-governmental organizations called on the international community to take action against the forcible transfer of Palestinians. So are we seeing the beginning of a shift? Well, maybe not because Netanyahu is continuing to make noises about attacking Iran uh, that becomes a, a very real danger of spreading this from a regional war to a world war. But in this context, then, think about the BRICS summit. Think about the idea of nations meeting to discuss acting for mutual benefit. Mutual benefit meaning the cooperation between nations for developing the physical economy, to use the raw material wealth, for developing the infrastructure and the education, the health care of each of these countries. This is the direction that the world is moving. The West remains stuck in a confrontation, a confrontation with Russia, with China, with the leading nations behind the global South. And so the, the question then is, which of these visions will succeed? the demented, dysfunctional vision of the unipolar order, the rules-based order, and its chief salesman, the Willie Lohman of American diplomacy, Antony Blinken, 
or will we have emerging from the United States and Europe leaders who recognize that our future rests with cooperation with nations of the developing sector. Now let me call your attention to an event on October 26th in New York. There'll be a link to it to register in the description section of today's update. It's a Ser Vega Peace event, and it will include a number of, of speakers. It'll include music, and I think it's something that, that many of you will want to attend if you're anywhere near the New York area. And if you can't attend it, you can register online. But it's important that we build the in-depth capability in the West to make this peaceful transition from a bankrupt system into a system based on cooperation and goodwill toward the whole human race. So thanks for joining me today. I'll see you again tomorrow.